Good morning, everybody. Hello, good morning. Good yeah, morning, sir. Okay. Now, well, welcome to our class for today. Today, we have English proficiency class. And I want us to discuss briefly some expressions, correct usage in English. So we will consider verbs, preposition, adverbs simultaneously at the same time. What we are going to do is we are not going to look at them separately. Like what is a verb? How do you use verbs? What is a preposition? How prepositions are used as, as well as adverbs? What are adverbs or what is an adverb? What are examples of adverbs? We are going to use them in context, how to use them correctly in context, in language. Is that point clear? Yes, sir. So I welcome you all once again to our class. Good. So you consider some of these expressions. Look for, look for simply means search for or seek. You seek something. If you misplace something, you need to look for it, search for it, or seek. The verb seek can, you may not need a preposition for, you can simply say seek, because the act of seeking you are looking for. So you can say seek, I am seeking, I am looking for this and what have you. Okay. And then we have look out. Look out is beware. It means you have to be careful. Maybe somebody you are crossing a, uh, maybe a road or you, somebody has seen a dangerous animal somewhere. The person, hey, look out. There is a snake. Be careful. Okay. And then look after. Take care of. Take care of. For instance, in the absence of your parents, if you happen to be the big boy or the big girl in the family or the elder son or elder daughter in the family, you are supposed to take care of your siblings. You are supposed to look after your siblings. Is that point clear? Your younger siblings, you are supposed to look after them. You are supposed to take care of them. Okay, and then give away, give away, it will give someone or gives someone or anyone, anything or to give something away, okay? To give to someone or to give something to someone, give away, like you have something that you don't need. I can decide to give away my laptop. It means I can dash it, I can give it to you free of charge, not to sell it. Is that point clear? to give up, yes. yes. And we have give up. Give up is to abandon, okay, a habit. Okay, if you have any bad character, you are fond of smoking, watching Pono, you know Pono. <laughs> <laughs> you have to give up, you have to stop it. You must abandon it. A student should not be fond of watching pornography, okay? It will not help you. It will pollute your mind. You will not be able to even concentrate on your studies. So you have to give up. You have to abandon. If you, you, you have been smoking, you have to give up. If you have been telling lies, you have to give up. So a habit or character that is no good, you must stop it. To abandon me, to forsake it, okay? To do away with it, never to go back to that. Okay, and then get off. Get off can also mean to leave. For instance, leave for a place. Okay, leave a, a particular place, a place. A light from maybe a vehicle, a public vehicle, or what have you, a commercial vehicle. For instance, trotro, get off. Okay, if you are going to maybe in Sawam, and you take trotro, that is going to Kumasi. When you get to Nsawam, definitely you have to get off. Is that point clear? You have to get off. The car is going to Kofodria, or the car, the vehicle is going to where? Kumasi. 
and you are supposed to alight at in Sanwam. Okay, when you get to Sanwam, you are supposed to get off. You are supposed to get off. You are supposed to get off. So for, we can have a special, you are in the wrong bus. Get off at the next stop. Okay, you are Tessano. Now you are going to Accra Central or High Street and you bought the car, you bought the trot trot that is going to Kaswa. And then you now you have reached where uh, Abeka, Abeka Janshi. Definitely you have to get off. You shouldn't continue in that vehicle. So you have to get off. Oh, I'm going to Accra Central, or I'm going to where uh, Makola. And then I'm in hold in the wrong bus. So I have to get off at the next stop. Is that point clear? Yes, sir. Good. And then dismount, uh, get off. Another mean of get off is to dismount from a horse, not just a vehicle. Dismount, okay, to get off. Dismount from a horse. You are on a horse, you can get off. It's like, it's a sound of war descending, okay, and coming out of the, that particular horse. That is to get off, dismount from a horse, not to mount a horse. And another meaning of get off is to escape punishment. Escape punishment, escape punishment. Escape punishment, get off lightly, okay? Receive a slighter punishment than usual. He was tried for theft, but he got off because there wasn't sufficient evidence against him, okay? Somebody might have done something that the person needs to be prosecuted. The person must be punished or penalized. But when there is no enough evidence, okay, against the person, the person is likely to get off. Okay. The person was likely yes, to yes. get likely to get off, get off, okay. Receive a slighter punishment than usual. He was tried. He was tried for theft, but he got off because. There wasn't sufficient evidence against him. And then get on. Get on means to board or enter a public vehicle. Enter a public vehicle, a horse or bicycle. It's like it can be opposite of all. Get off. Get on, get off. Don't forget that. Off. Then that off takes. FF, 2F, so don't forget, not 1F. If you consider it to be OF, then that becomes like a, a preposition. But here, get off is an idiom, it's an expression to alight, okay? Okay, come down, send, to dismount. And then to get on is to board, enter a public vehicle. So it's like that's the opposite, mount a horse or a bicycle. You can get on a motorbike, you can get on a bicycle, you can get on a horse and what have you. So he got on his uh, horse and then he went away to turn away. He got get on with get on with is for instance, how is he getting on at school right now in the wake of coronavirus? So I may ask you, how are you getting on at school? Or how are you getting on with the online class? online teaching and learning. How are you getting on? Okay, how are you getting on? Okay, with the online class or lectures? Do you get it? Okay, sure. So, so yes. we are, I'm getting on very well. Okay, I'm getting on very well. How are you getting on with your English class? How are you getting on with your French class? How are you getting on with your ICT class or what have you? You need to know all that and uh, that will be fine okay sir all right somebody is saying something that is trying to join but we are already here you should try and join on the platform so that is it so are you getting on very well with Ousu debris are you getting on very well with your friend class are you getting on very well with your ict class are you getting on very well with your okay, pursuing your education in Ghana at Ghana Technology University, how are you getting on in Ghana? 
Okay, somebody can also ask, how are you getting on in Ghana? How are you getting on at school? How are you getting on with your online lessons? So a word can have several meanings. So you need to understand a word and then you'll be able to use that particular word in several contexts. A word without a contest is a pretext. So don't forget that a word can be highly polysemic. A word can have several meanings. You shouldn't just assume that every word means this, and that is a meaning. It's not like that. So now we are talking about we are talking about getting on, like mounting a horse, a bicycle, entering a public vehicle, and the same get on. We just added a preposition word, and that can also be used in different contexts. Okay, how are you getting on in Ghana? How are you getting on with your friends, new friends in Ghana? How are you getting on with your class in the IGTUC? How are you getting on with the online lectures? Okay, following the yes, closure sir. of the face-to-face -face, uh, lectures or lessons, how are you getting on with the online lectures or class? That's what you need to take a look. Good. And then so it can mean leave work amicably with someone how are you okay and mr so so and so getting on so we can equally have it in that you see the person asks, oh how are you doing john and how are you getting on with mr uh, uh appear how are you getting on how are you and mr appear getting on how are you together with Mr. Pia getting on? You can equally put it this way. How are you together with Mr. Pia getting on? How are you and Mr. Pia getting on? How are you and so so and so getting on? Good. Any question? No, it's okay, sir. All right. Oh, one of the other guy has left. Yes. Well, what happened? Maybe he has some internet issue. Good. So we have get out. Get out means to leave a life from a vehicle or, okay, I got out of the car at the crossroads and walked the rest of the way. Get out escape from, live or an enclosed place. Don't worry about the snake, I'll put it in the cardboard or bus. It can't get out, It means it cannot escape here. It cannot leave that particular place. That is a meaning here. And then get out of, free oneself from an obligation or habit. For instance, I said that I would help him. Now I don't want to but I can't get out of it. And I cannot free myself from my promise. I promised to help him. I decided to help him. But now, looking at him, his character is not, is so abhorring. I don't like it. He's a bad person. He's so bad that I don't want to help him. So I said that I would help him, but now I don't want to. But I can't get out of it. It's like I've been obliged, I've been compelled to stick to my promise. That is the meaning of get out. Good. He knows that he smokes too much, but he says that he cannot get out of the habit. Okay. If it happens that way, then the person needs your deliverance, isn't it? Yes, sir. And the person needs deliverance because he knows that he has been smoking too much, but he cannot deliver himself. That he said, but says he can't get out of a habit. So it's the habit that becomes part and parcel of him. Then account for, give a good reason for, explain satisfactory, okay, some action or expenditure. Give a good reason for doing something. For instance, if you happen to be a treasurer, like you keep the money for a particular group of people, you, are, you must account for the money you spent. You must account for 
You have to account for the money you spent. He has behaved in the most extraordinary way. I can't account for his actions at all. It's like I cannot explain. I cannot give any good reason for his action. He has behaved in the most extraordinary way, very strange way. I was not expecting him to behave like that. But what can I do? I can't account for his actions at all. I cannot account for his. And then answer back. Answer back. Know how to use the word expression, answer back. Okay. Answer a reproof impudently in a very disrespectful manner. Okay. To answer back, it's not about somebody calling you on phone and then, oh, I'm going to answer back, I'm going to respond, or I'm going to reply <laughs> to the person's message or whatever. No, to answer back. For instance, I, I happen to be your lecturer or teacher, and then I ask you, ah, uh, Ariel, why are you not coming to class? Why are you not coming to school? And then you tend to ask me, it's none of your business. Uh -huh. Why? Why are you asking me that question? You have answered back. If you do that, it's a very impudent way, okay, the respectful way for answering or replying uh, to a question. So when I told him that he was late, he said, it is none of your business. You can see that. If he wants to go on working here, he will have to learn not to answer back. So in actual fact, if you are living with your parents, we should not be fond of answering back. You get it. You may yes, do something bad. Your mom or dad will punish you, will rebuke you, or can even insult you. Then why did you do this? We should do that next time. We see what I'll do to you. Okay? Don't do that again. Go away. And then you turn to your mom or your daddy and say, You can't talk to me like that. Hey, if you do that, it means you are not <laughs> respectful at all. You shouldn't even talk. You may not like whatever your mom or your dad has said, isn't it? Once he has insulted you, but you should not be, you shouldn't talk. You just have to be mute. You have to be silent. You have to be quiet. You shouldn't answer back. So answer back is negative. It's not the normal answering of uh, maybe somebody sending you a mail, a message, what's that message, and you try to answer back or reply to that message. That is not, that's not normal, you see. So answer back is an idiomatic expression. Like to answer a reproof impudently, disrespectfully, okay, not in a respectful manner. That shouldn't be the case at all as a child, as a learner, as a student. You shouldn't do that. Okay, that is what you mean. Great. Can you continue? Yes, sir. So we have. Hello. Is it Bailal or what is the name? Good. We can continue. So we started talking about. Okay, so now we have reached answer back. How to answer, we shouldn't answer back, we should not be answering back to your parents. Okay, anybody who is older than you, even your colleagues, sometimes it's not advisable to do so. It's not advisable at all. You should not be fond of answering back. So, ask after. Let's look at ask after. To, to ask after is inquire about the health of someone. I asked after his sister because I knew that she had been ill. You know that somebody has not been well. You need to ask after the person. You need to ask after a friend. You need to ask after a loved one because you know that the person has not been well. The person has not been doing so well in health. So you have to ask, ask after the person. Ask after the person. It means you want to know how the person is doing, okay, in health. 
is the person doing well in health or not? How is the person doing now? Is the person getting better? Because you know that the person has not been well. The person is ill. So you need to ask after. So not just the normal asking to know how the person is doing. But in this case, you know the person is not well. The person has not been well. And you know a family member, you have come across a particular family member. You need to be caring, you need to be courteous enough by asking after the person, by asking after the person. So, good. So we continue. Ask someone in or up or down. Invite someone to enter or come upstairs or come downstairs. Is that prudence? Ask him in, like you happen to be in a room. And somebody will know who is there. Is that for so and so? Say yes. Ask him in. Ask him in. Ask him up if you happen to be upstairs. Ask him down if you happen to be at the ground floor. Do you get the point? Ask him down. Yes. And it means ask yes, him sir. to come downstairs. Ask him to come upstairs. Ask him in. Ask him up. Ask him down. Ask him in. Ask him up. Ask him down. Ask him down. in. Ask him up. Ask him down. So you know how to down. use this expression accordingly. So ask someone out. Invite someone to a meal or to an entertainment or party. For instance, I can, I can say, okay, I want to ask you Okay, I want to take you out. I want to ask you out. Okay, invite someone to a meal or to join an entertainment or party. Okay, can I ask you out this evening? It means, can you can I take you out this evening? Can you go out this evening? Okay, but in the wake of coronavirus, my brother <laughs> and my mother, whoever who is under the sound of my voice, it's not advisable allowing yourself to be asked out. Do you understand? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's never advisable allowing or accepting any invitation, asking you out is never, never advisable. We need to turn down the offer. We shouldn't be fond of accepting invitation, people taking you out. You have to observe social, social. distancing, academic, even academic distancing. Right now, we are observing academic distancing, isn't it? Yes. Look at yes, where sir. I am now, talking to you right from my home, and then you may also be somewhere else, you either in your bedroom or whatever. So we are all observing academic distancing, social distancing, religious distancing, observing everything. We need to observe that. So this is not a time for you to be asked out. Shouldn't allow anybody to ask you out. Okay. Yes, sir. So we need to know how to use all these expressions. Good. Any question? No, it's okay, sir. Good. So, be in, be in. It means, are you in? It means, are you at home in this building? So, if I ask you, are you in? It's, it means where you are supposed to be. Are you there now? Okay, be out, be away from home or from this building for a short time. So, I, I am not on campus now. I am not in. Okay, be away. Be away from home, from this place for at least a night. Be away. That is, be back. Have returned after a long or short absence. That is, be back. I want to see the person. Is he in? No, I am afraid. He is out at the moment. No, I am afraid. He is away for the weekend. See, the person is not around. Will not around. be around for some time. That is the meaning of be away, be in be out, so be in, be out, these are the expressions, be in, be out, be away, be back. Learn to know how to use all of them. 
be in, be out, be away, be back, okay, be in, be out, be away, and be back. When will he be back? Just as we have just seen, okay. He will be back in half an hour or next week. Okay, before, and then we have four. Be in favor of, be for me, be in favor. I am doing, I am for doing nothing till the police arrive. I am doing, I am for doing nothing till the police arrive. If there is an issue, you are not supposed to act, you are not supposed to talk, then the person will decide that I won't do anything. I am for doing nothing till the police arrive. And then there is this expression in the Bible. If God is yeah. for us, who can be against us? So for and against. Okay, we have a, normally we have a debate or a question. Right for or against the topic. Okay, teachers, okay, uh, are more important than maybe doctors, or doctors are more important than this. Or write a topic, write a, what do you call it, an essay on the topic, celebrating or criticizing people, celebrating our leaders or criticizing. You can have a topic, that, write a, to, uh, uh, what do you call it, write an essay on the topic, false prophets and genuine prophets. So at the end of the day, you have to compare and contrast and draw conclusion. That's what you need to know. So for or against, are you in favor of a motion? Are you in favor of a topic? Are you in favor of a particular assertion or not? Or disagree? So be for or against. Are you for or against? So if God be for us, who can be against us? Or if God is for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? That is Romans chapter 8, verse 31. We need to pray that God will always be with us. Because once you have God on your side, it means you are safe and secure, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's it. Good. So we have to pray That's and we really seek to be in the presence of God so that the Almighty God will be for us. He will not be against us. Okay, because when, once God is against you, then you are doomed forever. Ah, that's it. So we pray that may God never be against us. Amen. Sir, I have yes. a question. Okay. Uh, will, will you send us the slides? Yes, yes. I want to. We can have it. Don't worry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can share it. I can uh, even upload it on the platform. The online yes. platform, or I can even share it on the WhatsApp platform. What I mean, you'll we'll get it. Okay, okay, okay. So, right. thank you. Right. So, be over. It means be finished. The storm is over. The problem is over. So, now we pray that may this pandemic, coronavirus pandemic, be over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if you are praying, you can use this expression, be over. We pray, be over me, be finished. So the storm is over. May this pandemic be over. May this problem be over. May this disaster be over. May this calamity, may this sickness, may this disease, okay? Coronavirus pandemic in particular, may it be over worldwide. May God have mercy on us so that coronavirus will be over. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Good. Amen. So be up, be out of bed. Okay, be up. Example, he's very lazy. He's never up before nine. So if you are a student and you are never up before nine, it means you are who? Who are you? You are a lazy. You are lazy a lazy guy. person. A lazy student. But a student must not be lazy. A student must be diligent. A student must be hardworking. Not lazy. You need to be up. You need to wake up. Be out of bed. Be up to. Be physically or intellectually strong enough to perform a certain action or task. Example, he wants to pursue his PhD in English this year, but I don't think he's up to it. 
I don't think he is up to it yet. She wants to sit for TOEFL this year, but I don't think she is up to it yet. It means the person is not prepared physically or intellectually, mentally to do it. The person is not strong intellectually, the person is not strong academically, the person is not strong physically, even financially, it's not up to it yet. So be up to. I hope you are up to pursue your program in this university. Are you not up to? Are you not up I to? Am. Yes, I hope I am. you are up I am, to. sir. 